Hi everyone, welcome back at Charlotte from At Charlotte's House. Today I am sharing this side table makeover. See how it looked when I first brought it home. See how I made it look like this. Stay tuned. store and I found this table for $10. I really liked the size, I really liked the lines and the hardware, but I didn't love the color of the wood. This is not an antique. In my opinion, this was nothing valuable worth preserving. So I decided to take a little paint to it and give it a makeover. The first thing I do whenever I am painting a piece of furniture is that I lightly sand it. My goal is to take away any shine that might be left as a result of a top coat or a sealer. Sanding it gives a little bit of a tooth to the wood and this is what that paint is going to adhere to. Once I finish sanding, you want to be careful that you clean it entirely. You want to get rid of any leftover dust and debris. So I just went over it with some spray cleaner and a paper towel. I went ahead and removed the knobs. This is an interesting piece of hardware because the base plate is actually nailed right into the drawer front. I didn't really want to risk having something happen to the base plate when I removed it. So I used frog tape and I taped off the base plate, but I was able to unscrew and remove these little knobs. So it made it a little bit easier to tape. For this piece, I reached for some chalk paint. The advantage of chalk paint is that you typically don't need to put a primer coat down first. I also happen to have some in my stash, so for me, that meant it was free. The disadvantages of chalk paint is that it has sort of a flat finish, so often you have to go over it with a top coat of either a sealing wax or a polycrylic. So I started by painting the entire surface white, and then I wanted to emphasize the lines on the trim on the front of the cabinets. So I used my frog tape and I went ahead and I taped off the obvious molding on the front of the cabinet. I was a little bit worried that the frog tape I had would pull off the paint because I had just painted the base coat, but I was amazed. Nothing peeled off whatsoever, so that was really, really good news. I could have let this dry and taped off the inside corners, but I was feeling impatient, so for the inside corners, I actually just used a brush and I did my best, but obviously bringing in painter's tape the next day would have made a much crisper line, so that is just my personal decision. For the top of the piece, I wanted to bring in a little bit of this nice graphic color that I have going on in the front. And rather than use a ruler and measure, I just use one width of frog tape around the perimeter. And then I use the same width of frog tape to help me tape off this first stripe that is that darker green. And then I wanted the blue stripe to be a little bit narrower the way it is on the cabinet fronts. So for this one, I did quickly measure and give myself some guidelines. And again, I used some frog tape to help tape off that square on top. And I love the way that looks. To make sure the corners were nice and crisp. I used the edges of the frog tape as much as I could and then I used a ruler and a sharp edge to trim that one loose piece of tape. I love the way this turned out. This color scheme fits into my decor a little bit better than the warmer sort of cherry stain that was on this before. Finally, I love how easy it was to create this sort of retro graphic pattern to the piece. All I needed was some frog tape and I was able to easily make these clean crisp stripes and I think it makes such a nice difference on the finished piece. I love that it has a little bit of a softness to it because of the whites and the greens and the blues. I love how I was able to use just paint and painter's tape to update this piece and I am so pleased with how this turned out. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about this makeover, go ahead and leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day everyone.